How we doing today guys? Sam here at Anglers. We just did an installment on how to rig an umbrella. Now we're going to go into how to rig a tandem rig here for your spring season. So dive in here close and we're going to take a look at a few of the things we're going to need for this. Starting out we have a pair of crimpers. These are the Diamond Mamoy crimpers here. These are a great set of crimpers. We love them here at the shop. Moving on, you're going to need anywhere from 60 to 100 pound monofilament for your leader. You could use flora if you wanted to. Um, right here, I have this in the high vis, and that's just so you guys can see it a little bit better today. And um, most of the time, you're going to do a clear though. Pushing over here, this is where you find your two important things, and that's going to be your uh, hook baits. So this is a parachute here because it is spring season. We're making some big baits. Um, this is a six ounce and then I have a two ounce here with a four ounce difference. You do want some sort of difference between your weights there. Um, at minimum, you wanna do at least two ounces different, but you could go, um, you know, ideally I'd say you would double the weight, but as long as you got about two ounces or so of different weights there, you're gonna be all right. Um, so we're gonna rig these with nine inch base today. So we're gonna zoom in here and take a look on how to rig this. With this, I'm just going to line up here my head on the shad, and I'm going to put a little mark as to where I want my hook to go in. From there, I'm going to do a little scribe into the shad just so I have a reference. From there, I'm going to lay the middle of the hook over that scribe, and then I'm going to find where I want my hook to exit right before the bend there. We'll go ahead and add another scribe to it. From here, I'm going to go as center as I can. I'm going to try not to go too deep into this bait. It'll kind of make it look a little weird. So we're going to maybe go an eighth of an inch down. We're trying to run into center as we can through the belly of this shad here. Once I get right to my little scribe, my point's going to want to push out. I'm going to use the seam there from the manufacturing on the shad to pop right out as centered as we can. From there, you're just going to push it down until it's nice and straight there. From here, we're going to meet our hook up through, going through as centered as we can, and out through the center. So a couple other things we're going to need are just some sleeves here. These are 1.0 double copper sleeves, and then we also have a three-way swivel. Um, so starting out here with the line, there's a lot of different ways people do this as far as how much line they go and whatnot. Um, I really like in the springtime to do a little bit longer than I would in say the summertime. So in the spring I usually like um, on the heavier bait, about eight feet to uh, six to eight feet or so. And then on the longer one we'll do about 12 to 18 feet. Um, for this one we're going to do an eight and an 18 which is kind of my sweet spot. So starting out here on the heavier bait is where you're gonna want the shorter leader to go off of. So we're just going to fold the shad over. I'm gonna grab myself a sleeve here, going through the sleeve and then out there. And then we're gonna come back around, push that on down. And I'm gonna try and leave as small of a tag end, if any, as I can. It's going to help prevent me from catching seaweed leaves and those um, those nasty jellies we get there in the springtime. I'm going to go through the crimp tool here, centered as I can in that first spot. Once I get it lined up, now I'm looking to make sure that when I crimp this and smash this, that I have a flare on each end of the crimp. So I'm going to smash the center of it while keeping a flare on each end. The reason we do that is so that this line can now move around. If I had that smashed all the way down, I would be chafing right into the side of the copper. But now that I have that flare, the line can move a lot more freely. So that's how we started out there with eight feet there on the heavy bait. Now we're going to add a crimp to one end of the three-way swivel here. that on through doing the same thing there just leaving a very tiny tag end and the loop size we're doing anywhere from about an eighth inch to a quarter um, not too much bigger than that lining it up evenly there making sure I'm in the center of the sleeve here and we can go ahead and smash that down you should have two nice flares on each end with the middle smashed and very little, if any, tag end. So for the other one here, we're going to do 18 feet. So I'm just going to do three arm lengths here. Put 
Now I'm going to do my smaller bait here. We are going to fold that back eventually. Grab our crimp, slide it through one side. Sometimes the end of those, depending on how you cut them, will kind of flare out a little much. Let's see if we can't get it on there now. There we go. From there, pull it down to about a quarter to an eighth inch loop. Do the center there in the first slot on my keepers. Go ahead and smash that down. From there, it's just a matter of attaching the other end to your three-way swivel. Finding our sneaky crimp. We found the crimp. Going through there, through there, back through there. And just finishing that off there. All right, guys. Well, that's it for rigging a simple tandem rig. The same thing goes for your summer and fall time fishing smaller baits. You can scale that line down quite a bit, though, as you progress into the summer and fall. But um, thank you guys for stopping by, and come by and get geared up for your spring season. Have a good one.